The search for the next master chef started with thousands of hopeful home cooks from all across the country. Each judge had just eight aprons to hand out to the hopeful home cooks. Boy, do I see potential. And we each battled it out to have the opportunity to mentor the best of the best. When you have talent like this, you can't let it walk out the door. Once one of our white aprons yeah. was in their hands, let's go! The home cooks began the journey of a lifetime. Woo! So beautiful. This season, the challenges were more difficult than ever before. Switch! The contestants survived intense MasterChef team challenges. Oh, my God! Whoa. Whoa. They're landing for dinner! As the competition got tougher... I got tables that are ready to walk out. I need the food! We sometimes had to send home our own home cooks. I gave you both aprons because I believed in both of you. Please, place your apron on your bench. <sighs> now, only three home cooks remain, and each judge finds themselves with one home cook in the finale. So, the stakes are just as high for us because only one home cook will become America's master chef. Now, last week, the contestants were sent home to prepare for the finale, and we went to surprise them in their hometowns to make sure that they were on track to take home the trophy. Hello? Hello? Hey. Are you both there? Hey, Gordon. I'm just rolling through downtown Nashville. What's happening with y'all? Hey, Joe, how's Music City, my friend? What's that noise in the background? Where are you? Yeah, I'm kind of in the swanky downtown part of Houston. I think you're lost. No, no, no. I should be at Caesar's house shortly. This is why we never let you drive, because you're always getting lost. <laughs> Rowan, pull it together and get to where you're going. Looks like I'm here, guys. About to visit. America's next master chef. Talk to you later. Bye. Are you guys still there? Hello? 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 Oh, my God. Come on. What? This is unreal. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. <laughs> I had to move back home after I left my career as a teacher. Oh, I mean, it's embarrassing living with my parents at 28 years old. Sit down. But I have to do whatever it takes to pursue this culinary dream. <laughs> Here we are. The young lady is back at home. Back home. <laughs> because she wants to follow this food dream. When she called me and said she was going to quit her job to be a chef, I was like, what? <laughs> I was not. When Ashley started actually cooking here, yes. we doubted it. For a while, we got a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but we made sure she had everything she needed. Trust me, food is definitely her calling. And if she wins, it's going to be one of my proudest moments ever. I want this for myself, but I want this for them. They have literally Even though they didn't agree with me, they have never turned their back on me. So how do you repay them? I don't know. <laughs> you know, just like every... You become America's Next Master Chef. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Absolutely. Singing Gordon is just invigorating. Seatbelts on, please. Because I get to share with him who I am and where I come from. It's very important for Gordon to understand how I operate and why I operate the way I do. I have not come all the way to Opa Laka <laughs> without going to the farmer's market. <laughs> oh, See. my goodness. Getting to show him all of the exotic fruit that I've grown up with, I couldn't have asked for a better moment. So this is where you shop? This is where I shop. What an oasis. <laughs> I know. Give me a little insight, yes. just a little snippet of the yes. menu. Where uh, are we going? We're in it. Yes. Miami, opalaka yes. flavors, citrus, seafood. Good. I am mixing my southern roots with French cuisine and hopefully give you a feel of like that Michelin star flair. I am going to wow you. Forget everybody around you yes. and focus on three things. Okay. The appetizer, <laughs> the entree, yes. and the dessert. Yes. Ignore everything, everything else. else. Steely, focus. That's what you need to bring to the finale, yes. okay? Yes, yes. I am ready to kick some butt. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. You can do this. Thank you. Oh, I cannot wait for this finale.
today, I want you to write about a story that you plan to tell your children someday. Being back home has been amazing. To see my kids' faces for the first time in months, it means the world to me. Something that you've experienced, OK? Mr. Hurt, can I interrupt your class? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> How are you? With the finale right around the corner, I've been cooking every single day. What's going on, guys? I've really been pushing myself to focus on plating so that I can bring that MasterChef trophy home. So I invested one of my eight aprons in him because I believe that he had the passion and he had the skills. And I think the greatest thing is he is an incredible student. So I'd love to hear from some of you guys the impact that Mr. Hurt has had on you and your lives in this classroom. Like, when he came, I just thought he was going to be like another teacher. But he actually was connecting with students. Like, he actually came to the basketball games. he will leave his door open for students to come in during lunch and stuff like that. We don't really have that many male figures in the school. We can really relate to Mr. Earth. His background is similar to mine. Just knowing how far he's come, I feel like I can achieve the same, the same thing. My students, they grow up in these rough neighborhoods and rough communities. Well, guys, thanks for sharing your stories. I know where they come from. I've been there and I've done that. And so if I win the MasterChef title, I'm taking that money back and I'm going to open up a culinary institute to make sure that I give my students a chance so that they can better themselves. So you've been here in Nashville two years now. And you know, you came in with Southern flavors. I'm sure that has its roots here in Nashville. Tell me about that. The food scene here is amazing. Hot chicken is something that I experienced when I first got here. And I got into the MasterChef kitchen on hot chicken. Speaking of that, finale's coming. What are you thinking? Southern, Southern. You know, anytime I can stay true to my roots, it's gave me positive results. I'll tell you what, it's got to be elevated, though. It, it does. I'm going to give you some advice. Think like you're in like a really luxurious restaurant in a city like New York or Paris. Flavor, presentation, sophistication. But as much as I think sticking to your roots is fundamental, make sure you bring the level. I've done so much to get here at this point, and I am ready. You got a wit for those kids I met in the classroom. You got a lot riding on this, Jerome. I got you, Joe. It's game time. My eyes on the prize. All right, Jerome, I'm counting on you. And I can see that MasterChef trophy sitting in my living room. Finale, I'm coming for you. Eat a chicken. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Food plays such a big role in my family. And my mom is the greatest source of inspiration in my culinary journey. Uh, come in. Hola! I know my mom is beaming and excited to have our food and our culture represented in the finale. He has beat out thousands of people in this country. Yes. How proud are you guys of him, huh? Oh, my God. Oh, pues imagínate, para mí sería un orgullo bien grande porque que cuando yo me vine a, a este país, él era bien chiquito, o sea, él siempre ha sido mi soporte. O sea, dejé mi familia, dejé a mis papás, dejé todo, todo. Pero si él gana, valió la pena. Ya casi está ahí. She was a teacher in Mexico, and she couldn't continue that career here because she stayed home to take care of us, which was the most important thing. She practically gave up her life to make sure we had a life. It's a huge deal. That's an honor and a huge deal, and I take it very seriously. That's why I want to make the best uh, menu I can put together for that finale. So what are some of the thoughts? So I've been thinking something with duck, pato maybe as my entree. Mm -hmm. Chocolate, definitely in the dessert, because, you know, Mexico, Aztecs, Crocodile. chocolate. Uh, it's the appetizer where I'm still a little iffy. Well, think about what is the basis of Mexican food. Yes, chef. And hopefully being home will allow you to get inspiration and love from the people that care about you the most, mm -hmm. OK? Si se puede. Si se puede. It's so refreshing to have my mentor here. I definitely needed that guidance. Thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate you guys so much. I only have one shot to get this right, so I'm focused, I'm determined. Bye, <laughs> I have to bring everything I have to take that trophy home. Up first in this three-way culinary battle, a young man in my apron. Season. A 33-year-old high school English teacher from Houston, Texas. The first hurdle that stands in Caesar's way is a home cook that took my apron, my protege, Ashley. 
and 28-year-old professional grocery shopper from Opelika, Florida. And our final home cook, a young man that I have mentored through the entire competition, Jerome. A 25-year-old English teacher from Louisville, Kentucky. Now, throughout this competition, you've had a lot of obstacles thrown your way, including extremely talented opponents. But tonight, they've all returned to cheer you on. And then, of course, your family are here in the MasterChef kitchen to support all of you. Caesar, you have your mom, Maria, your sisters, Elda and Diana. Ashley, here to support you is your boyfriend, Damien, your father, Henry, and your mother, Aletha. Jerome, here supporting you tonight is your fiance, Brandy, your father, Christopher, and your grandma, Elizabeth. It's now time to put together the best three-course dinner you could ever dream of. One incredible appetizer, one stunning entree, and one delicious dessert. Your reputations and ours are on the line. This time, there are three judges that want to win. And that means we expect a three-course masterpiece. You'll each have 10 minutes in the pantry to collect everything that you need to cook us the best three-course dinner of your lives. Your time in the pantry starts... ...now. Let's go. This is the battle of the century. Raspberries and my money is all on Jerron at this point. Smoke paprika. He's been the underdog since day one, but his passion and drive for how he cooks is the reason why he's here. I have no doubt in my mind that Jerron is going to be the next Master Chef. Gotcha, thank you. There's only one person that is going to win it all. I think it's Caesar. He's got the knife skills and the food knowledge. He has experience. Under this pressure, he's going to be focused, and he's going to get it done, and hopefully come out on top. Uh. I want Ashley to win. Come on, from Miami. If I couldn't take it, somebody from South Florida needs to bring this home. Collard greens. Ashley is a powerhouse. She has become so fierce in this kitchen. And that is the attitude that you need to take this trophy home. Let's go. Caesar, Ashley and Jerome, the grand finale is about to begin. And of course, it all starts with the appetizers. Caesar, what will you be making for your appetizer? I'll be preparing a squid ink infladita with lobster, dragon fruit salsa, and a roasted poblano sauce. Ashley, what will you be making for your appetizer? Tonight, I'm preparing a pan-seared red snapper with spicy kung salad, malonga fritters, and an ahi coconut sauce. Jaron, what are you going to be making for your first course? Tonight, I'll be making a Nashville hot quail with a fingerling potato salad and poached quail eggs. This is it. You'll have just one hour to make us your amazing appetizers. Three plates of each. Are you ready? Yes, yes Joe. Joe. Don't let us down. Your time starts now. This is it. Let's go. Got 
This is it. I mean, one of the most important nights of their culinary career. Also, a big night for us. For the first time, we are competing against each other. May the best judge win. We lit, baby, we lit. We gotta move fast, baby, tonight. Come on, y'all. Let's go, come on. This is it, the MasterChef Grand Finale. Whip, whip, baby, whip, whip. Whip, whip. Heard that. This year, we're mentoring individual talent. Oh, Ashley! Yes, we're highly competitive, but we're going to be judges to all three of them this evening. If your contestant or your contestant gives me the best dishes of the night, yes. I'm going to be with you and crowning them as America's Next sure. MasterChef. Jerome, he's doing Nashville hot quail. It's his audition dish that he's taking it from a chicken to a quail. Does he know how to cook a quail properly? He's never cooked a quail before. There we go. 30 seconds over the quail, it's going to be a dry quail. It's a big risk, but that's the kind of guy he is. He's taken the tradition, he's evolved it. The guy's honest, he cooks with a lot of heart, sure. and everything tells a story. The way that Jerron could fall down is that his dish is too simple. The flavors are not elevated. Yeah. Fingering potatoes and quail's eggs. I don't know if you're going to elevate that. There's only so far I can go with that stuff. What worries me a little bit is his plating. He's made a lot of progress. It's still a concern. For that team, Ashley on. So, Ashley's appetizer, that pan seared red snapper with a Florian salsa with conch in there. She's playing to her strengths. She's cooking food from her back garden. But the idea of conch, it's a sea snail from the Caribbean. It's a very difficult shellfish to nail. Listen, if there's one person in this competition can nail it, it's Ashley. Another habanero, some mango. You know what, Ashley, using so much fruit, are you concerned that sometimes managing the sweetness and acidity of fruit, whether it be citrus, mangoes, pineapple? Uh, that's a good question, but she's got two proteins there, the pan-fried red snapper and the corset conch. So, you, know, you need to balance that up with the heat, the sweet, and that level of acidity. You got this, Caesar. Sorry, little guy. Oh, oh gosh. I apologize before doing it, all right? <laughs> Caesar is taking a very humble ingredient like the corn tortilla, elevating it by putting squid ink into it, frying it so it can puff up and house all these beautiful lobster and different elements in there. Woo! There's a lot riding on the execution of that little puffed up tortilla. But why take a risk just as a shell to put lobster in? It's texture, it's flavor, and it's a striking presentation. It's made with squid ink. That seems kind of like really off the rails for me. Well, do they make squid ink pasta in Italy? They do, but they've done it for centuries. Have they made squid ink tortillas in Mexico for centuries? They have not. <laughs> OK. <laughs> <laughs> We have 15 minutes down. We have 45 minutes to go, guys. Come on. OK, Jerome, tell me about your appetizers. What I want to do tonight is to elevate my Nashville hot chicken by doing it with a quail. Quail is much bonier, much smaller. The it meat's is. dark, not white. Will it take the spice? Will it take the heat? Does it translate? Are you taking such a big risk with swapping out quail for chicken? Can you make it work? I can definitely make it work, and I'll let you be the judge of that. Eye on the prize, baby. I'm bringing it home for us, you know? We can go to Italy. You want to go to Italy with me? I do. I want to go, and you got to make sure your mother's there. It's tough. If we go to Italy to meet my mama, you have to pay because you'll be a quarter of a million dollars richer, I think. I'll pay for you. You'll pay for me. I'll pay for you. <laughs> do you speak Italian, Jerome? I don't, but you know what? I'm a quick learner. I'll leave you one word. Buona fortuna, my friend. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. 30 minutes remaining. 30, heard. Let's go, Ash. Right, young lady. Yeah, chef. Give us an insight to the dish. Living in Opalaka, you live around so many different cultures. My grandfather has roots in Bahamas, wow. so that's where the kunk salad representation is. I have an aunt who's Peruvian, so that's why the sauce has that theme. And then, you know, in, in Miami, you can get locally caught seafood all day, every day. So it, it, it's a representation of my childhood and my foundation in culinary. That skin on that snapper is delicious when it gets nice and crispy. How are you going to cook it? I'm pan searing it in some oil, and then afterwards, I'm going to rotate it over and baste it in a lot yeah. of butter. Put everything you know, live for, breathe for, on that plate. Yeah, chef. Good luck, Thank Ashley. Thank you. She ready. 20 minutes remaining. Come on. Cesar. Chef Aron, how are how you? How are you, my man? I'm doing great, You're doing chef. good? Yes, chef. 
So talk to me about your appetizer. I'm doing an infladita, which is corn dough that you part cook on the griddle and then you throw it in the deep fryer so they puff up, make a hollow shell, and then I'm gonna fill it in with this lobster that's gonna get tossed in this tomato sauce, chef. Caesar, a lot can go wrong with that. What happens if the infladitas don't puff up? Well, then I might have to change the shape of my dough and call it something else, chef. I uh, got you. <laughs> so it might be a taco by the end of the day, huh? Exactly, pretty much. All right, Cesar, keep your eye on the prize, Miko. Yes, All right, chef. you're almost there. Almost there. Come on. We are coming down to 10 minutes to go. Come on, guys, pick it up. 10 minutes, baby, 10 minutes. With minutes to go, Caesar, he may have to change direction. Because once they're toasted, he puts them in the fryer to blister. And it's that blister that puffs them, right? Yeah, absolutely. Almost like a souffle potato. Exactly. If it doesn't puff up, where, where'd you go? He's going to be in trouble. He's doing them now? Yeah, he's actually doing so them now. He's doing them now. He's giving me a whole tap. It's up. Caesar, they're puffing up. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 